Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. In this video, I'm going to finish my manure spreader makeover on this New Holland 514 manure spreader. And we're going to start up in the front of the spreader where I'm going to put on the idler sprockets that the apron chain turns on. Remember in the last video, I finished out with making new mounting plates for these new sprockets. And they fit right up into here, into this slotted hole. And then this plate goes over the front of it. I'm going to take that all the way back to the back side of its adjustment zone. Here's a sprocket from the underside. Ignore those areas that I didn't paint. This is a 50 foot paint job. 50 foot away, actually it's a 560, 50 foot in 60 miles an hour. Or is that a 50 60? I guess it's a 50 60. And here's the other one installed. The reason that these ride in slotted holes is so that you can adjust them forward and backwards and then you can lock them in place with this bolt here once you get pulled up to the correct tightness. The apron chain needs to be a certain tightness which is measured by the sag it has on the underside. Now I can get to installing the apron chain and when you buy a new apron chain some assembly is required. You get a box full of links, the chain links that go together like this and then you get the slats. I did some math on the total number of links I got and the number of slats I got and figured out that there's six links that go between each slat and I kind of did a little test here to make sure it went together all right. In this instance the vertical legs of the angles are facing the front of the spreader. Depending on the manufacturer of spreader you see them facing either way and people will debate which is better but this is the only way this one can go in. And here's why it's the only way that this can go in. This is the way that the old chain faced. So the T's were facing backwards so that the sprocket engaged this face right here on each link. But I can't do that with my new chain because my new chain is different. See where I've got a square on this edge where it used to ride against the sprocket? The new links have an arch there. I know this may seem esoteric, but it's pretty important. Here's the way the old apron chain ran. Sprocket is turning this way, it's going that way, so it's bearing right here on this link of the chain, on this side of the link. And the T is facing backwards. With the new chain, if I put it in the same way, with the T facing backwards, Look at how the sprocket engages that piece of chain. There's an arch in that chain and the sprocket only engages on the corners of the sprocket. It doesn't ride flat on the face of the sprocket. If I flip the chain around and run it opposite from the way the old one was, it rides correctly. Now even though it's riding on this joining piece of the T, it's flat to flat. So it'll minimize sprocket wear. People will often say that you shouldn't have it bear on this link part of the chain but in reality I believe that it's actually stronger because as the chain works through it's wearing all along that surface as it bends and remember the thing you're really concerned about is sprocket wear not chain wear because each of these links only goes through the sprocket once each load probably but those sprocket teeth are going round and round and round and round many times during a load so you want to really be concerned about how it engages the sprocket and this one goes like this sorry about talking so much at the beginning of the video but some of these things like this they're important to explain it took me a while going back and forth and scratching my head to figure this out, doing some reading. I looked at the owner's manual. Strangely, the owner's manual, the original owner's manual, shows the chain facing both directions depending on the photo. So who knows how important it is, but I like to get these little details right. Ready? <laughs> my son Henry is going to help me put this all together. One, two, three, four. If 
by the time we get really good at this, we'll be done. Ready? Go! All the way to the end and turned it around the front sprockets and now we can just pull on it from the sides. Henry. You know I'm paying you by the hour. You should slow down. Tell me when. I'm ready. Uh, I'm gonna start hitting my jack here. That's what I was thinking too. I think I might have to move these. Jack stands are in the way of the apron chain. So we're gonna have to move them. Okay, we're back in business. Go on, Henry. Jump. You just tie it up over the sprocket here. Hopefully it'll stay. Um, I don't know how far you want me to pick it up. I got two links. That'll work. Now we have the chain just over the rear sprockets. And there's the other end of it, so we just need to fill in the blank. This is the last crossbar. We've got six links on the back sprocket coming up from the other crossbar. We got this one, we got a lot of sag on the bottom. Mm -hmm. According to the manual, the chain's supposed to clear the underside of the axle here by one to three inches. I think we got a ways to go. <laughs> so what we'll do to tighten that is put a ratchet strap around under here. I'm afraid it's 
as you first start using it, it's going to wear, you know, get longer yeah. pretty quick as it wears in. So I'd rather not put another link in, but I'm not sure that we got enough adjustment room. I guess I could try doing one side at a time. Well, it's far enough to latch in, but we can't. Oh, it's awful it tight up. under there. That's awful tight. Or I'm sorry, let's add another link. There. Hey. Ah. Here's what it looks like underneath. Just a slight droop. Remember it said one to three inches clearance from the axle. We're at about an inch now. Which is good because this chain's going to stretch as it wears in. Yeah, it's a little less than an inch. It also means that as it does stretch, we've got the full amount of tensioning available up front to pull those front sprockets ahead. So that banging you were hearing once in a while is the beater coming up and hitting right there. And I think it's a function of the chain needing to wear in and loosen up a little bit. You can see the high spot there. Maybe I'll just grind that down a little bit to keep it from hitting temporarily. Here on the other side, same thing happened. It's down, gets into that T-bar on the chain a little bit. Just needs a little fine adjustment with the grinder. Let's get these wheel hubs back together. I packed the inner bearings here, set them in. I have a set of new wheel seals here. Pack some grease in them. This is like finger painting. Now here's a funny thing. I just remembered that the original wheel seals were installed this way, but the open end always goes toward the thing to be sealed. Is it to seal dirt from coming in? I'd rather not leave that spring in there exposed to all the crap that's coming in from the outside. So I'm going to install them this way. I find it interesting that the manual says how to torque the wheel bearings. Usually it's a feel thing, but it says to torque them to 35 foot-pounds. Of course that's too tight. And then the manual says to back it off one flat, which is one-sixth of a turn. And then it says to back it off further till you get the cotter pin hold line up, but not more than one third of a turn. 
So that's where that leaves us. Number two, this one gets a new cap. Next job is a drive belt, and she's pretty crusty and cracked all over the place. But replacement is not as easy as you would think. There's no room on this pulley to slide a new belt around. You got the shaft in the way here, too. From underneath on the back side of that same pulley, there's a retaining nut there, but it's not connected to this member. There's a little gap, but not enough to get a belt through. And from the back side, see, they bothered to put a hole there where it rides. If they'd made that hole bigger, I might be able to squeeze a belt through there, but not the way it stands. Now I have you right where I want you. Oops, there we go. <sighs> she definitely needs a cleaning in here. Put this front part back together. Now I just gotta take this over the idler pulley and adjust it. Actually, it doesn't look like I have to adjust it. This is the tensioner on the idler compressing this spring. It's supposed to be equal on the nuts to that tab right there. Or the manual says two and five eighths, which is two and five eighths, so I'm all set, at least for now. The old belt goes back in the new belt's case. Even though it's really ratty, I save these in case I have a breakdown and I don't want to wait a couple days to get a new one. I'll have one to put on temporarily. There's something crunchy falling out of the sky. This is thick reinforced rubber. It came out of our horse trailer when we bought it. It was on the floor and I saved it. I got a whole bunch of sheets of it. off because it was too dirty to put in my manure spreader. I always wanted to say that. It's probably the only time in my life I'm ever going to be able to say that. Yep, had to look clean. This is going to prevent stuff from falling out when I'm loading the manure spreader. I really don't like it when the manure spreader drops crap on the ground in the driveway. This spreader originally came with a shield that was mounted here and it had a hinge on it with sheet metal that would keep it from leaking, but there were just bare remnants of that left when I bought the spreader. You can cut apart mud flaps too to make this. That's what I did with my other spreader.
This has bugged me ever since I got this spreader. There's the teeniest, tiniest little lip here where it must be a worn PTO shaft ran on this coupling and it makes it hard to hook up. And it just needs to be filed down. Just need to take the time to do that. I think I got it. What a beautiful sunset. Oh yeah, my tires are ready. Fourteen ply, and they look like military surplus tires. These will last a long time. These are the same size as the tires that were on at eight and a quarter by twenty, but for some reason the tread looks a little narrower. It's okay. The price was right. I met Ernie when I picked up the tires. You remember Ernie? He's the guy who is the machine at putting on tires. Well, I figured he'd be some big bruiser to put on these tires with just spoons. He was about 5'10", slim bill. I said, I expected different. He said, it's not the strength, it's the technique.
This is my special degreaser formula. Cayenne pepper, bull urine, and vinegar. Works great. I'm getting low on New Holland red paint. So I guess I'm gonna to have to sneak in some of this international red. It ought to make the machine more reliable. If there is a difference in the reds, it's very subtle. So I'll keep it on surfaces that are different from the New Holland red. Doing these last little touches on things, touching up bolts, painting these guards, helps me finish the job in my brain to say, you did all the details, now you can put it away and move on to the next thing. Back to the yellow. I couldn't imagine ever running a spreader with unpainted lug nuts. Ugh, oh, it'd be so humiliating. And then to the last of the New Holland Red to touch up oopsies and things that I missed. It's the next morning and my parts are dry enough to reassemble. I just got to take this masking off of here because I didn't want paint where this slides on the PTO shaft and it'll gum up the works. Grease this up and put it together. Almost there, just gotta grease everything. We're nearing the finish line. I went a little crazy painting the gearbox here. I don't know why, I just felt like it. Now, where are all the grease serves? I know there's one on this clutch. Let's find it. Oh, there it is. Previously I filled the beater drive gearbox and the apron drive gearbox with oil. This one takes hypoid oil, this worm gear, which is a little different. It's called a hypoid. It takes a different kind of oil because there's a lot of friction that goes on between the big gear and the worm gear.
Overrunning clutch on the beaters. That's it, done. Check that one off the list. Looking around YouTube, I couldn't find a lot of videos on putting a new apron chain and a manure spreader of this size or putting a new deck in or any of that kind of stuff. So I hope that eventually these three videos will be of help to somebody else that's going through the same kind of freshen up that I did. I hope you enjoyed this series and I'll see you next time.